Hey folks on YouTube, I want to explain a little bit more how any permutation can be written as a product of disjoint cycles. So in our last video, we took a permutation and we wrote it as a product of disjoint cycles. And then, and then we did the same on another example. Okay. I wanna show you how to do this when you're giving a permutation in cycle notation, but it's not yet written as a product of disjoint cycles. So the reason why these cycles are not disjoint is because I have three appearing in two different cycles. So if you have the same number appearing in any two different cycles, then it's not in disjoint cycle form. You know, so looking at two, that's another reason why this is not in disjoint cycle form. Um, you could also look at four to realize it's not in disjoint cycle form. Uh, in fact, three appeared more than twice. And even if you look at one, you can see it's not in disjoint cycle form. So once you've written a permutation in disjoint cycle form, every number should appear at most once. All right. So let's try to write this particular permutation in disjoint cycle form. Okay, so when you write a permutation in disjoint cycle form, you always start with one and you see where one goes next, okay? And I plug in numbers from the right to the left because, you know, if these were functions and I were applying them to an input, this function would apply first and then this function and then this function and finally this one, okay? So I'm trying to figure out where one goes. I plug it in on the right, you know, I plug it in right here. The first cycle sends one, one to four. And then the next cycles, this next cycle doesn't move four. The next cycle sends four back to two, which is not moved. So in total, one gets mapped to two. The next number we're gonna write down is where two gets sent. So we plug in two here and we see where it moves. Two doesn't get moved here. Two gets sent to three. Three doesn't get moved. And then three gets sent to one. So two I know is going to one, but I don't write down a one. I just close the cycle because that implies that, that two is going back to one. I know where one goes, I know where two goes, but I don't yet know where three goes. So let's write down three next. Plug in three, three gets sent to one, which stays put, which stays put, which then gets sent to three. Okay, so three got sent to three. So I can just close this off. And then Finally, let's plug in um, four, because I know where one and two and three go, but I don't know where four goes. Four gets mapped to three, which gets mapped to two, which gets mapped back to four, which doesn't move. So four goes to itself. And you could just write this as one, two. Cycles of length one, you can emit and you don't change change anything. So if I had to draw a picture for this, I would draw it as follows. All right, so in the, in the end, I think my transposition sends one to two and two to back to one and three and four just stay where they are. And if you wanted to, you could write this as a product of these four things. Let's, let's try it. So I want to fit in four different permutations here. The first one sends one to four, which goes to three, which goes to one, two stays put. The next one swaps two and three. So I, I started here, which I wrote that down, and then I went here. So now I'm going to write down this one, swaps two and four. 
one and three stay put. And lastly, let's swap one and three. Okay. And we'll see that, you know, I have written this composition as a single um, transposition, which is one example of a product of disjoint cycles, because one indeed goes to two, and two indeed goes back to one, and three, after a lot of work, stays put, and four, after a lot of work, stays put. Let's do one more example. Let's rewrite this permutation as a product of disjoint cycles. You don't actually need to show much work. That's the beauty of cycle notation. You can multiply things quickly or simplify things quickly. So first we need to figure out where one goes. One gets mapped to, which gets mapped back to one, which stays put, which then goes to three. So one gets mapped to three. Next, we need to figure out where three goes. Three goes to one, which goes to two, which goes to four, which stays put. So three goes to four. And now where does four go? Four stays put, stays put. Four goes to three, which goes to two. So four goes to two. All of my numbers have appeared already. So I already know that two is gonna go back to one and I'm gonna close off the cycle, but it doesn't hurt to check your work. Where does two go? Two goes to three, which stays put, which goes to two, um, which then goes to one. So I close off the cycle. So that's an example of taking a permutation that's not written in disjoint cycle form because I have repeated numbers and writing it in disjoint cycle form where every number appears only once. And those are, those are illustrations of this theorem that any permutation can be written as a product of disjoint cycles. What public questions do you have? Thanks so much.